Alrighty, so today I finished reading Ready Player One, and there was a comment made on my last video saying how it was poorly written, and characters flat, so on and so forth, um, and I'm not disagreeing with him, I'm just gonna say that's not the point. Ernest Cline, I think, wrote this for the generation that grew up in the 80s and 90s and had that as their pop culture. It was a, a means of fusing the 80s and 90s pop culture with our modern pop culture because there are lots of people that have seen memes and have some idea of interacting with this older pop culture that don't actually know the stuff that it's referencing. Or there are ideas being presented that actually link back to that generation and vice versa. You know, there's a lot of, you know, even my generation, I struggle with some of the newer technology, and I think Ready Player One was meant to be a bridge for that. So, dude who commented, yes, you can tell exactly how it's going to end, just like everything in the 80s. I mean, look at Krull for crying out loud. I don't even think that was well written, but it was still awesome back in its day. Or... Shoot, Princess Bride, we knew how that was going to end. Um, but that wasn't the point. Uh, the, the formula of the hero's arc was set in place from the very get-go so that we could build the world around it, which is what I think the 80s really did a great job of doing. It was kind of formulaic, but it's formulaic now for our generation. But back then... It allowed for greater world building. It allowed for us to see and explore and twist and reinvent ideas, hopes, beliefs, dreams, desires, so on and so forth. So, in that regard, I think Ready Player One was very well written. Um, there were a couple of twists, a couple of things where you could almost expect it but not still expect it. Um... Spoiler alert, H isn't H. She's H. Um, that part, I figured there's going to be something like that in there somewhere, because that's a common thing nowadays, from the, the extreme end of older guys posing as younger girls to lure people out there for bad reasons, to the innocent, I just need to, I just want to be someone else for a little while. Role-playing wasn't well enough, so let me just try and be a persona role-playing a character. Which happens all the time, really. Um, who hasn't had multiple accounts to try and interact in the digital world from a different perspective in and of itself? I mean, that is something we as humans still can't do, is change perspective. Um, we can change our thoughts, ideas, actions, beliefs, but that still is a modification on our own perspective. But understanding a different perspective is something that I think is totally unique and impossible for humans to do. I'm not saying people aren't trying, and I don't know. You know, over the course of time, if I look back on myself 15 years ago, yes, I am a different person from what I was then, and my perspective's totally different. At the same time, if I were to go back and understand that perspective, it would still help me who I am now. You know, kind of like that Greek ship where you just kept replacing parts until you had to wonder when it was a new ship. Um, but... Ready Player One's already in movies, or in production as a movie, and I don't think it's going to work. I don't think it's going to have the power that Ernest Klein wrote into Ready Player One. It could be a very cool movie. It could be a very awesome movie, but the fact of the matter is it's not going to be able to convey um, the ideas behind it. All right, um, they'll be able to show the H isn't a white guy, but a black girl, um, they'll be able to convey that. But the allure of a surreal estate, the allure of digital space, can't really be shown that well. Um, it can't be shown as a spectator. It really requires a level of interaction, which is why any opportunity has been seized up. You know, I have a, I have a co-worker who has her own forge. I spent a lot of time there and really enjoy working at her forge. 
and her boyfriend is still content to sit and blacksmith on World of Warcraft when she's just pushing him, saying, hey, you know what, just actually come out to the forges. The difference is, this is 3D, this is real. But there still is an allure to the digital. Which, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying technology is evil or that it's somehow detracting from what can be done in the real life. Well, okay, I am saying that. But technology is a tool and how we use it is dependent upon us to be used with judiciousness, you know? Um, Philo T. Farnsworth, when he invented the television, said that television is a gift from God and he will hold people accountable for how they use it. And I think if he saw what Ernest Klein was dreaming of in Ready Player One, he'd be like, holy cow, that's an awful lot of responsibility. Because um, think about it. Quite easily, I could invent a whole new persona, name, age, date, characteristics about him, her, it, create everything about this person, thing, create a couple social media accounts, and create that idea that this person exists. In fact, there's a movie about it called Simone, or Sim 1, however you feel like pronouncing it. Um, create the illusion that there is a person there when there isn't. People do that. Um, but that would require the responsibilities. What's this person's morals? You know, because, you know, one in a couple of years ago, we had someone commit suicide because of something a mother wrote as another person on a social media. That's a lot of power. I'm barely responsible for one person. I don't like doing that all the time, but to be responsible for two persons more than I can handle but people do try because they want the benefits without the responsibility which I think is a lot of the problem nowadays we just don't like consequences granted nobody likes consequences unless they're good ones but the problem is getting good consequences require a lot more work um, so if you haven't read player one sorry for spoiling it for you uh, if you have tell me what your thoughts are did you like it? Did you not like it? Do you think that um, our shift in storytelling is a good thing from the hero's arc being the foundation to the hero's arc being negotiable? Which is really all I can say for modern storytelling. I think that's why we needed something as extreme as Game of Thrones to get my generation back into mainstream media. Because, let's face it, we know the hero's going to win, we know the guy's going to get the girl, and we know they're going to slay the bad guy. Probably by book two or three, but he's going to slay the bad guy. Um, nowadays, I think authors really have to make us believe that the guy, the person, hero, might not win. That the bad guy might win. That there may or may not be a love interest to get. And that's, that's a jarring shift when you look at it from then to now and now to then. But... Is that a good thing? Tell me what you think. All right? Have a great day.